Thank you, CC Arts Link, for assembling us today. I'm Ariel Apira, and I'm the curator at the Verilis Center, uh, Research Center and Public Forum for Art, Culture, and Politics at the New School. The Verilis Center for Art and Politics was launched in 1992 in direct response to the cultural wars in the US. Today, the assaults on cultural expression are more insidious and more elemental. Prompted by political developments here and abroad, the center's activities have been organized around a central theme, a question, if art is politics, positing art itself as a political practice. If art is politics, is politics art? A dance? Music? If art is politics, what is its political currency? How does it shift and affect the sites, practices, and participants of political process in ways that traditional forms of political involvement may not? Positioned as a political practice, does it embrace values that transcend party politics? And how does it implicate cultural and educational institutions in this political order? For over two years, we've examined this provocation through the work of our fellows, including Fatin Zaktan from Ramallah, Palestine. We've been privileged to host her for over four weeks, and we're sad to see her go. It's cold. I need to go home. <laughs> I believe her. I want to follow her. Um, let me, OK, then I can. Well, um, thank you all for having me for uh, this amazing audience and for ArtsLink and the Vera List Center. Today is also emotional for me because I woke up as I do every day. My name is Fatin. I lived all my life under the Israeli occupation. Uh, this is the only reality I know. Sometimes I hear artists and art operators and curators uh, speaking about living, uh, working under conflict in conflict zone areas and all these big terms. And for me, they make no sense because that's the only life I knew and this is the only practice an environment where I had to practice my work, myself and the artist uh, around me. So I woke up in the morning in my comfortable room here at Washington Square Hotel to the news of uh, 25 Palestinians killed in the uh, recent Israeli strikes of Gaza to a demonstrator in Lebanon who was killed. He's the third, I imagine, Amanda, since the beginning of the revolution. And to 300, 300 youth killed by snipers in peaceful protests in Iraq, and of course to the continued um, uh, attacks on Syria, to two friends being arrested by the Sisi regime in, um, in Egypt, and to the, the, so, and of course I can go on and on and talk about Yemen and talk about other parts of the region. We said that the world is at a sad place, but for me, uh, in particular, the Middle East is going through a very tough period at this point. And we are all, as art and art operators, are trying to find our ways. In Palestine, it's really funny because until a few years ago, wherever I went, in any cultural uh, event around uh, the region, um, uh, a conference on culture and arts, it was always Palestine. At a certain point, with the Arab revolutions that started in, nine, in 2011, the situation changed, and Palestine was no longer under the spotlight. And this was good and bad. This was bad because we kind of left that we were felt left alone, in spite of the fact that today, again, I felt that we're not left alone because Palestine was a recurrent theme in the Israeli occupation throughout the talks, even by non-Palestinians. But it was also good because for the first time, we were on our own. We were not following funders' agendas in arts. We did not have to please anyone. We did not have to be professional Palestinians. As Palestinian artists, curators, uh, managers, we were forced, and I quote unquote forced, to address a narrative that is expected of us. Palestinians living under occupation, the victims. And for the longest time, Palestinian artists tried even to protest that. They wanted to do their own work. They wanted also to address the Israeli occupation and the suffering and dispossession of the people, but at the same time, have the space uh, to relate, maybe even address the Palestinian issue from a global and more uh, bigger context. For me, I am um, very comfortable with the, with the word curator. Uh, I'm comfortable because I feel that it has so much power that uh, in decision making. And I have a problem 
uh, my practice, my recent practice, I moved from working uh, with uh, elitist artists, particularly visual artists in Palestine, to working with the city of Ramallah, where I had to work with a wider audience, and now to working only on small-scale projects that make direct impact on communities and give power to communities. I, uh, I worry about the concept of being a curator because I don't want to make decisions on behalf of artists or the community anymore. I started questioning even the language in 2006 when we had the second legislative and presidential um, elections in Palestine. And surprisingly, in spite of all the work that we've been doing as civil society activists and artists, suddenly the majority of the population voted for Hamas, the Islamists. And that was a very difficult day in Ramallah. I remember I was running Sakakini Cultural Center. We had an, an emergency meeting for artists and uh, operators as we do all the time in the midst of a political crisis. And we wondered what we were doing wrong. If we were working so hard and so actively, what was the problem? And one of the things that we realized is that since the first intifada, which broke out in 1986, the Palestinian population has not had a, uh, a say in the course of uh, the future of Palestine, whether on the political level or on the social level or on the cultural level. Decisions were made for us. And this was, um, it was the time to reflect and see how we can challenge our own practices to try to actually make an impact on ground. Because the truth is, was, is that we were not really trying, we were not being very successful making an impact on ground. In this context, I changed the way I am working. Uh, not only me, many uh, initiatives and artists and operators. Now you see a lot of initiatives in Palestine that link art with agriculture and science that goes down to working with communities and giving power to the communities. So in this context, I want to talk about three projects, maybe two that I'm working on. The first is uh, the reclaim of public space for Palestinians. It's a platform that uh, addresses one of our neighborhoods uh, in the city, where uh, it's a, it's an, um, it will end with a festival, but the idea is to give power back to the people to decide on how they want to see their neighborhoods, what kinds of plants they want to see planted in their neighborhoods, what kind of dialogue they want to engage with each other and also with the city and on the governmental level. Uh, what kind, what do they want to see happening in their public spaces? How do they want to see their uh, uh, taxes being spent uh, and so on? In addition to this dialogue that will end up in a festival, we're also having a series of discussions uh, among thinkers, curators and artists to engage in and uh, discuss new practices that can give back the power to the community. The other initiative that I would like to raise, uh, and it's, it actually started here in New York City, ironically, it's called Rawa. I've been uh, one of the founders of Rawa working with Mukhtar. I don't know if Mukhtar is still here or he left. Rawa is an attempt to democratize funding in Palestine. It's an initiative that was, put to, it was initiated by Mukhtar Kokash. Mukhtar ran the, uh, the art and media pr uh, program of the Ford Foundation in the Arab region for the longest time. And suddenly he realized that it all has to go back to the community. It's not the big money that comes from the outside. It is how the community mobilizes from the inside, inside to make uh, change. So this through this initiative, we're not following funding trends. We have clusters that work in Gaza uh, in, with Palestinians inside Israel and also in the West Bank and in Jerusalem. And we identify for the first time in years our priorities. And we decide where the money should go and in what way working with the community uh, uh, directly. Um, so yeah, so this is what I do. Uh, I uh, was impressed by Amanda's uh, uh, presentation today. Um, I think change is uh, going to happen. And I think that um, uh, being a Palestinian, uh, looking at Lebanon is giving us, even artists and curators, so much hope in the change, in the peaceful change, and also in the role, again, that the, the reclaim of public space and how the entire population, not only artists, have been presenting themselves and mobilizing is very, uh, is very important. But I think that uh, the region as a whole has uh, very difficult challenges and we should not be blind or over optimistic. I think it's going at a certain point to get worse before it gets better. 
And I've learned over the years to accept that that's okay. So, thank you. <laughs> so, if I have, a, I have a question for you. Oh, that's our song and dance. All right, <laughs> that's a fine. Just wanted to talk, so if you could speak about intifada as a metaphor that you wanted to hit that. Yes. Um, Again, the most dynamic period I remember from my, since uh, my childhood of living under occupation was the first intifada, because that's when the communities mobilized. We did homeschooling, we, uh, we grew our own vegetables, we did our own activities without any uh, having to have a higher power. And this is the model that through Rawa and the program that we're doing in the neighborhoods that we're trying to, uh, in fact, bring back to Palestinian life, to give back the power to the people. 